Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we're glad. And I'm glad about it. Thank you for joining us this day. Wherever you are in the world, I give a shout-out to our college students. I give a shout-out to the military all around the world. I give a shout-out to our members that are traveling and joining us by way of the Internet. I'm praying that the word that God has given us today will be an incredible blessing to your life. I'm going to be ministering from Exodus chapter 15, and the title of the message is Handling Life's Bitter Waters. And I believe it will be an answer to somebody's challenges in life and help you move forward with God's will for your life. Have a great day and a fabulous week. You're worthy, Father. Bless your name. Father, we give you the glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your loving kindness to us every day. You kept us all week, brought us to this place today. And without hesitation, we give you thanks. We pray for one another and intercede. We pray for you to meet the needs of the brother, the sister, the person whose hand I'm holding. God, I know you know the details. We know you know the details of our brother, our sister. And you're more than able to step in and work a miracle. And we pray that you work that out in Jesus' name. Father, while we're praying today, we're praying that you would bless our time in your word today. Speak to us. Make this rainbow word fresh bread for somebody today. Give a level of direction and answer to solutions for somebody. Father, we pray for you to save somebody, restore some backslidden person, reclaim them. Let the saints be edified, almighty God. And let the name of the Lord Jesus get all of the glory and honor. We thank you ahead of time. Father, I pray a hedge of protection around this place that you bind every demon in hell. Rebuke every demonic spirit, every distracting spirit. We pray for our, our brothers and sisters that are not physically in this building, but participating with us, Lord, through the internet. We pray that you speak to them as well. And I give you the praise and the thanks ahead of time. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. All right, before you sit down, Grab your Bibles, your iPhone, your iPad, whatever it is you look at the Bible on, and turn it to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus, that's the second book in the Bible. Genesis, Exodus chapter 15. I, I'm not saying it because of you, because I know you know who it is, where it's at, but that joker next to you is, looks questionable. Chapter 15, and I want to begin the reading at verse 22. So Moses, verse 22, so Moses brought... Israel from the Red Sea then they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water now when they came to Mara they could not drink the waters of Mara for they were bitter therefore the name of it was called Mara and the people complained against Moses saying what shall we drink y'all say that what shall we drink so he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree when he cast it into the waters the trees were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. I want to talk about handling life's bitter waters. Look at your neighbor and say, handling life's bitter, bitter waters. Look on the other side, say the same thing. You got to learn how to handle life's bitter waters. You can be seated. You can be seated. Okay, it is 12.53, seven minutes to one. I promise I'll be finished when I get done. I love and look forward to the 12 o'clock service because this is the time I can take my time, no rush. Y'all get the whole dish, y'all get the whole meal, not a piece of it. Now, I don't have to cut nothing off the plate. I don't have to take nothing off, I can give it all to you. I want to just set the stage for this particular situation. This is the 15th chapter of Exodus. Uh, how many of you have seen the movie, uh, The Ten Commandments? Let me see your hands. Okay, good. Put your hands up. How many of you have read Exodus chapter 15? Let me see those who read those. Okay, some of y'all are lying. Okay. Uh, chapter 14 and 15 tells the story of the children of Israel escaping slavery. It's God opening up 
uh, them to be free. God raises up Moses and leads them to, to freedom. They get the victory. They get, they get released from slavery. And you know the story. They, 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 they gather their belongings and gather their stuff. They leave. They get down to the Red Sea. And they look over their shoulder, and here comes Pharaoh's army coming after them to attack them and recapture them. Charleston Heston, I mean Moses, stretches out his rod, <laughs> and the waters open up on both sides, and the children of Israel walk across on what? Dry ground. God did two miracles for them in one setting. God, number one, rolled up the water for them, a supernatural event parted the Red Sea. Number two, the miracle of making land or ground that was wet and muddy, he makes it dry. And they walk across on dry ground. Then he did a third miracle, actually. They got on the other side. When they got on the other side, Pharaoh's army decided to try to follow the children of Israel to the other side by going and following the path uh, between this opened up Red Sea. And the Bible says that the Red Sea closed and drowned Pharaoh's army. And the children of Israel are now free. They're on the other side of the sea. God has opened up and worked this spectacular miracle for them, and they're free. Right after this miracle event, they encounter a challenging problem. How many of you know, if how many of you experience in life that after God does something spectacular, the devil wants to rear his head and make something horrible happen? As a matter of fact, that's an important principle to learn in life. I don't have time to talk about it, but let me just throw this in for free. After something spectacular, the devil gets mad and he tries to create some problems and some issues. And, and in fact, that's exactly what happens. The children of Israel are through the Red Sea, and they get to a place, verse number 22 says, Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. The word Shur means wall. They had hit a wall. Now, I don't know if y'all want to tell the truth and be honest, but some of you today have hit a wall in life. You've been trying to move forward, but you've hit a wall. You've been trying to get promoted, but you've hit a wall. You've tried to advance something in life, but you've hit a wall. Uh, and the fact of the matter is the devil wants to frustrate you and make you upset and mad, but God has a plan for you. I want you to follow with me through this story. They, they, they get to the wilderness of shore, and there they are. They not only hit a wall, but they're there, and they've searched for water for three days, and they can find no water. I think you know that water is essential to life. You cannot survive without water. You need water. Animals need water. People need water. They, they need water. And then the text says, they came to Marah. Y'all see that verse 23? And they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Now, they've got a multiplicity of problems here. They're, they've hit a wall, and some of you have hit a wall in life. Some of you, you've backed up into something, you hit something, and you can't move forward. You can't get that promotion. You can't get a new job. You, do, you, can't, you can't move ahead, and you're frustrated. And they, they've hit a wall, and they're looking for water, and when they finally think they have found water, what they actually find is some water that they can't drink. It's bitter water. I thought I'd talk about this for a few moments because sitting in our midst, in the midst of the people here in this church that are members of the First Baptist Church and some of our guests are people here today who are like the children of Israel and you've come up against the waters, some bitter waters. You've come up to a place where life has not treated you right and people have made you angry and mad. Uh, people have pisseth you off. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, pisseth you off. That's a biblical term. Look it up in the King James Version. P-I-S-S-E-T-H. Pisseth. It's in the Bible. Don't email me. Don't write me. It's a biblical terminology. I thought I should talk about this because every day I encounter somebody who's mad, upset, hurt, disappointed, bothered, bitter, frustrated because life just has not gone their way and they have become bitter they become bitter because they were expecting one thing but something else happened you thought you were going to get good but you got bad you had prayed for answers but instead you walk away with questions you had hoped for deliverance but instead you got demons 
you, you, you thought that you were going to get a job, but you, instead you got fired. You, 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 you were looking for something in one direction, but you ended up with something in a different direction. Now, I thought I should talk about this because here the children of Israel have not only hit a wall, they have not only hit a place of sure, a place that they can't go forward, they have now come across some bitter waters. And the question is, they can't drink that water. Some of you have bitter waters and you shouldn't be drinking, but you are drinking bitter waters. Some of you have not only drunk the bitter waters, but you've put the water in a canteen and strapped the canteen to your belt. And every time you get an opportunity, you're pulling it out drinking from the bitter waters. Thinking about somebody who hurt you and somebody who did you wrong and somebody who lied on you and somebody who got you fired and why did they fire you and why they don't give you the song to sing in the church and why is this and why is that and why you're going through this and why you're going through that. Let me tell you something. Life has a way of handling you, handing you bitter circumstances. It is a part of life. It is a, it, is a, it is a part of nature. You just keep on living. Matter of fact, you don't have to ask for bitterness. You don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to order it. You don't have to go online and pay for it. It's going to find its way to your house. Uninvited, unrequested bitterness is going to make its way to your house. And the problem is some of you are letting bitterness move in and enjoy itself. You're letting bitterness come in and have its way in your life. And my assignment is to tell you it's dangerous to let bitterness come into your home. Somebody look at your name and say it's dangerous to let bitterness come in. Turn to the person on the other side and say what do I, what do, I do with this bitterness? They, they got to, a, listen to this, it says that verse number 23, they came to Marah. They came to a place, here's, here's what made them bitter. They came to Marah and there they couldn't drink the water there because the waters were bitter. And the Bible says that they named the place, they gave a name to the place, they called that place, they, they called it Marah. And the word Marah has a, a meaning, it means the fountains of Moses. It's the fountain of Moses. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked the question. Uh, they had been following Moses' leadership. They had been submitting to his authority. They had been following him. But now uh, the direction that Moses is going is, is creating some problems for them. And I thought I should talk about this because um, I, 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 I want to thank this church because y'all have given me great, great... Um, Support and y'all have followed most of y'all have followed me fairly well as your pastor. Most of you look at your David. I hope you ain't one of those people who didn't. But there comes a time in, in the children of Israel's life where where they cannot drink from the fountain that Moses drinks from. Those fountains were for Moses. And there comes a time in your life where you have to learn how to drink for yourself. You have to be able to get some, you have to be able to get some waters for yourself. And what a lot of y'all end up doing is going home talking about what the pastor said, what Jenkins said, Pastor Jenkins said. There ought to come a time in your life where you stop talking about what Jenkins said and talk about what Jesus said. Somebody high five your neighbor, say he preaching and teaching, show sure enough right now. I appreciate you talking about, I appreciate you learning from me, but you got to mature to a level that when you need direction from God, you can open up this Bible, you can get in your prayer closet, you can talk to God, and God can talk to, your, to you yourself about what he wants to do in your life, and you don't have to depend on what the pastor said. You can't always drink from the waters, from the same water. So, so they got to this place, and the waters were no good for them. It wasn't, it wasn't helpful. The Bible says the water was bitter. And I wanted to talk about this because some of you are drinking from bitter water. Somebody has made you mad. Somebody upsets you. You thought you was going to marry him and he walked down the aisle with somebody else. They fired you from your job. They gave somebody else the promotion that you thought you ought to have gotten. You should have gotten. And you see them doing their job and you say you better than they are. You should have got the job. Uh, you see her married to that joker, you say, that sh it should have been me. I think there's a song that says, it should have been me. That's an old song. Some of y'all don't know that song. 
lady saying she, she, she said it should have been me I can't stand it to see him walking down the aisle with somebody else it should have been me some of y'all are bitter and the question is what happens when you get bitter bitterness is not a good thing bitterness brings drama and pain he, Hebrews 12 jot it down don't have time to turn there Hebrews 12 verses 14 and 15 says that when you let bitterness come into your life it causes trouble to spring up in your life some of you got trouble because you've allowed bitterness to come in. In 2 Samuel chapter 16 and 17, listen to what chapter 16 and 17 of 2 Samuel says. In 2 Samuel 16 verse 23, it says Ahithophel, there's a young man named Ahithophel who when he speaks, it is as if you are listening to the oracles of God. You listen to this guy talk, it's almost like you talk, it's like it's almost like you're talking to God. Chapter 16, 2 Samuel, verse 23. When you get to chapter 17, verse 23, one chapter later, he commits suicide. How does a person go from being a being a oracles of God to submitting committing suicide? How do you go from being a mouthpiece from God and one chapter later you're killing yourself? It's because he got bitter. His boss, David, had done something that he wasn't happy about it. He became bitter about it, and it destroyed his life. That's why it's dangerous for you to live and abide in bitterness. Bitterness is a dangerous thing. Bitter, they done gone on with their life. You still harboring it. You still mad about it. You still trying to pay them back. You still trying to hurt them. They've gone on with their life, but you are still carrying it and I, I don't know who I'm preaching to but I believe you in his camp somewhere today that God wants to move you forward but you can't move forward because you're still trying to hurt the person back you're still dreaming about it you're still thinking about it you're still blaming them about it you're still holding them accountable for it you can never move forward doing that. There's a commercial that came on some years ago uh, for, uh, during the Super Bowl Budweiser commercial and it's a Budweiser commercial with the, uh, a lizard named Louis. Louis and his partner, his partner Lenny, was sitting on the on the branch complaining about the frogs. The three frogs that got the commercial that Louis and his friends had applied to be in the commercial. The frogs had one, one role, one responsibility. One frog said bud, the second frog said wise, the third, third frog said er. Bud, wiser, bud. That's all they did. They got, they got the assignment. They got the commercial. And Louis is up in the tree looking at the frogs doing the commercial. And he's bitter because he should have got the job. <laughs> and his friend said to him, Louis, let it go. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Let it go. You done gone on to another relationship and you still reflecting back on what they did. It's dangerous. And here they are at the place of Marah at some bitter waters. And that's what some of you here today, you're still complaining about. Matter of fact, here's how you tell a person bitter because they complain. Look at verse number 24. And the people complained. Y'all ever met a complainer, a whiner? They're bitter and whiner and upsetting a frustrated man but they're carrying the burden of bitterness and my job today is to try to get you past that I promise you today you keep living somebody's going to hurt you somebody's going to do something somebody on your job somebody in your family some neighbor some friend somebody you trusted somebody you love somebody who you went out of your way to support when they when you need them to help you they're not going to help you it's going to happen I promise you it's, it's a part of life it's a part of growing up. It's a part of experiencing the journey of life. It's going to happen. And the problem is when bitterness comes, when something happens that hurts you, you can choose to let it immobilize you or you can make the choice to let it roll. The Bible teaches us that they, they got to these bitter waters and they couldn't drink them. And so the Bible teaches us how Moses handled it. And I, I, love, I love what he did. I want to just tell you, you do what Moses did, you'll be able to handle bitter waters. Three things. Here's number one, verse number 20. Matter of fact, it's all in verse 25. Verse 25 says, so he cried out to the Lord. Stop, stick your pen right there. There's number one. He cried out to the Lord. He prayed. Somebody say he prayed. 
you got to learn how to pray. You got to learn to carry your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. You, you got to have a prayer life. You have to have the capacity to commune and talk with God and know that God hears you. I'm not talking about just going through the motions. Some of y'all are good at going through the motions. You know how to say the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, I'll be that name. Y'all go to be and say the same prayer every night. Here I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord must hold the key. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord must hold your day. I ain't talking about repeating no prayer. I ain't talking about repeating the words. I'm talking about a genuine relationship with God that you can say, God, I'm hurting and I'm here coming to you today and I need you to step in and help me in this situation. Some of you don't have that. It's paralyzed in your life. Matter of fact, the scripture didn't say he prayed. It said he cried out. It means he, he opened his mouth. Some of y'all pray little cute prayers. Nice little cute prayers. But there ought to come a time in your life where you cry to God. I mean tears running down your face. It's not coming out your nose prayer. When you fall on your face and cry out and say, God, I need help to get out of this situation. I... I can't do it in my own strength and power and might. I need thee there. He cried out to God. That's point one. You got to learn how to cry out. Somebody say cry out. He cried out to God and God gave him direction. And I'm almost finished. This is the shortest, the shortest sermon you'll hear me preach at 12 o'clock today. Is this one right here. Then it says in verse number 25, and the Lord showed him a tree. Somebody say, the Lord showed him a tree. Look at your neighbor, say, God showed him a tree. This is an important deal, and I, I gotta come down here because y'all don't hear me when I'm up here. When I come down here, y'all hear me talk to you today. God showed him a tree. See, the way you deal with bitterness is you pray, and number one, you gotta see the tree. The scripture says God showed him a tree. You gotta have the capacity to see a tree. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about a tree called Calvary. What am I saying? I'm saying you have to have the capacity and the ability to look past the person and what they did and see the master of the universe behind it all. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today. You got to be able to see. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today. You have to see that there is a God that is behind the, behind the curtains, pulling the chains and ordering the shots and calling the shots because the bottom line is this. I know that God would let nothing happen in my life that he has not already prepared me to be able to handle. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. When you can see the tree, you can see that God has somehow orchestrated, permitted it. He's not the author of it, but he permits it to happen in your life. He lets it happen. He, he, he signs off on it. I look back over my life and I think about some things that happened. And I can recognize the point that God had to sign off on it. That's what people of faith do. You got to live knowing and believe knowing that God has signed. He permitted it to come into the domain of my life. You got to see a tree behind it. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. He saw the tree. That tree represents that God is still in charge. Okay, y'all not, not getting it. And then it says, he took the tree, and what does it say after that? Huh? Read it, read it, read it like they do in the holiness church. <laughs> when he cast it into the water. When he cast it in the waters, the waters were made sweet. The waters were made sweet. When you put the tree in the water, God will change you from being bitter to being able to find some sweetness in it. 
Y'all still ain't got it. Somebody ain't got it. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you see the tree and you put the tree in the bitter water, God would take what once made you cry and give you the ability to shout and give him a praise about it. I got five people who understand what I'm saying. What are you saying, Pastor Jacob? What I'm saying is when God, when you see God's hand, you will be able to call the people who tried to hurt you and you'll be able to call them up and say, thank you. Thank you for firing me. I got a better job now. Thank you for leaving me. I got the person God wanted me to have. Thank you for talking about me. My, I'm stronger now than I've ever been in my life. Somebody say my water is sweet. I feel a shout coming on me today. Somebody high five somebody say my water is sweet now. I'm not crying anymore. I'm not bitter anymore. I'm not frustrated. I used to get mad. I used to cry when I looked at it. I used to be in pain when I thought about what you did. But oh God turned my bitter waters into sweet and I'm better because of what you did. Now some of y'all I'm almost finished. Some of y'all are between Mara and verse 27, which is Elam. At Elam, there were 12 wells. <laughs> Y'all miss a great spot to shout. And 70 palm trees. <laughs> Y'all, I'm preaching to myself. I'm excited. 12 wells. That means prosperity. That means more than you could dream or imagine. 12 wells. More than you can drink from by yourself. He got enough for you and your mama and your grandmama and your babies and your sister and your brother. He got 12 wells. And you're in between. And you, 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 you stuck in between. All I'm trying to tell you is don't drink from the bitter waters of Mara because you got the wells of Elam just up the street. <laughs> Woo! Somebody say, I got the 12 wells of Elam just up the street. And I got 70 palm trees just up the road. I got prosperity just around the corner. Ain't no need of me crying over what you did to me and how you fired me and how you talked about me and how you rejected me and how you lied on me. I ain't going to deal with you. I'm, I got so much better in store for me. Let it go, Louie. Look at your neighbor. Find out what their name is. Say, let it go. Call their name out. Stop crying about it. Let it go. Stop complaining about it. Let it go. Stop whining about it. Let it go. You, you're better because of it. You're stronger because of it. You're richer because of it. You're blessed because of it. All because you learned how to put a tree in your bitter waters. That tree is a tree called Calvary. Amen. You got to see God. You got to look past the person and see that God allowed it for your betterment. Yeah. I, 
I remember, I can tell y'all two or three incidents in my life. I remember when I had this girlfriend, I thought I was gonna marry her. And I came rolling up the street and she was in the car with another dude. Thank you for being with that other joker. Some of y'all need to be sending some thank you emails. Pull out your phone right now. Send a thank you text to somebody who done hurt you. Say thank you. And I remember I applied for this church in Washington, D.C. They called me up and said, you one of the last two candidates. You under the last two candidates. Yes. Hurry up, give us your, your resume. I yes. threw it together, didn't have no resume. I threw it together, Jesus. sent it to them. Never even called me back. Yes. I learned later that they had another person that they wanted to be their pastor. And so they just want to put up another name against that other person. That other person had preached there the previous week before the vote. I hadn't preached there for a year. So they just wanted to use me. But in the words of Bill Withers, keep on using me till he used me up. Because I'm serving a God who is sure is using me to do the things he's doing now. <laughs> Somebody help me give God a praise. Thank y'all for not calling me. Thank you for not voting me in because I am where I am supposed to be. Do y'all understand what I'm saying to you? Stop being bitter. Let it go. Amen. Give the Lord a shout. Somebody needs the Lord Jesus in their life. You need forgiveness of your sins. You don't have the capacity in your own strength to make it right. Come on and say yes to the Lord right now. Say yes to Christ right now while the blood is running warm in your veins. And say yes to the Lord. He will make a way for you. Come and accept the Lord. Come and rededicate yourself. Come and get assurance. You need a church home? Come join the church. You're already saved? Come join the church. Right now will be the time. Come on, somebody else, come. Don't put it off. This is the day, this is the moment. This is the time. Don't let the enemy hold you back. The God of the universe is calling you with his arms stretched out wide for you to come. He loves you. He's seen your pain. He's seen your hurt. He's made provisions for your sins to be washed away. For you to have a relationship with him. Come. Right now. Amen. Come on. Right now, right now is the moment, today is my day, I've been changed, I've been changed, I have waited for this moment to come, and I I won't, I won't go back.
change. 